morning principal vijaya good morning very glad to be here thank you thank you for joining this principal uh, vijay krishnan from tolani college principal of tolani college welcome madam good morning thank you thank you so much for being here हेलो हेलो
available, ma'am? Yes, we can begin. It's 11. It's 11. Shall we begin? Sure. Yeah. Shall we begin, sir? President, sir? Yeah, yeah. Please, start. Yeah. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches the arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. Let the country youth be awake. Let us all rise for the national anthem. Jamagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharata bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Uttada Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jaladhi Taranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Ashish Maage Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Janagana Mangala Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Kindly be seated. Thank you. Arise, awake, and do not stop till the goal is reached. I, Maria Mutukumar, on behalf of our management of Vivek Education Society, Principal Dr. Vijeta Shetty, Madam, consider it as a great honor to graciously welcome our chief guest and keynote speaker for today's Srimati A.A. Saraswati Memorial Lecture for the second annual lecture, the highest civilian awardee recipient, Padma Kopilil Radhakrishnan, sir, former chairman of Indian Space Research Organization. I heartily welcome you, sir. I also extend my warm welcome to Honorable Justice, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, sir, former judge of the High Court of Bombay, and I also welcome his family members. I take this opportunity to welcome esteemed principals of various colleges across India and abroad. Heartiest welcome to all the invited guests, teachers, and most importantly, the dear students on this National Youth Day. Let us all heartily welcome you. Be the pride of the nation always. Robert Adams rightly said, within you is the light of a thousand suns. On this auspicious day for the second annual memorial, which marks the birth anniversary of the great visionary leader, Swami Vivekananji, and National Youth Day, let us light the lamp of knowledge and wisdom to dispel darkness forever. May I now invite 
President Sri Ram Sir of Vivek Education Society to give his welcome address. Thank you, Maria, and uh, uh, a very good morning to everyone. Respected Chief Guest for today's function, Dr. K. Radhakrishnan Sir, former Chairman of Indian Space Research Organization. A guest of honor, Justice. S. Radhakrishnan, sir, Principal Vijayada Shetty, madam, my colleagues in the Governing Council, principals of other colleges who are participating in today's function, teachers, and above all, my dear students. It's indeed a great pleasure to have amongst us today an esteemed personality in Dr. K. Radhakrishnan, Padma Bhushan K. Radhakrishnan, to deliver the keynote address for the second A.A. Saraswati Memorial Lecture. Just to give you a background, this lecture has been commemorated in the memory of the mother in law of uh, Justice Radhakrishnan, sir. And this is an annual feature of the Vivek Education Society. We began this last year with a talk by retired Justice Sri Krishna of the Supreme Court of India on data governance and data protection laws. It was very well received amongst our students and it was a topic which is, which is very relevant in today's context. This lecture, every year, it's going to be an every year affair where we will discuss, we'll invite eminent people to talk about contemporary issues facing the society on lectures on commerce, subjects like commerce, law, or finance. Today, we are chosen a very, very pertinent topic, which is how the youth will shape the future of this country. Just to give a background, as per the 1991 census, the youth population was, that means in the age of 15 to 24 years, was 19.1%. And it's estimated to be about 34.33% in the next census, which is coming in 2021. By the year 2022, it is expected that the India's working population will overtake the non-working population. And this will give a huge demographic dividend to the country. Countries will benefit from the economic potential of the youth or if and only if we provide them with good health, quality education, skills development, and decent employment. If these are not provided, the demographic dividend can turn into a demographic disaster. Youth is the very formative years of a person. And this is where he is full of energy, he or she, and this energy needs to be channelized in a proper way so that we are able to construct constructively utilize the energy of the youth. Let me give you Two examples. If you look at the startup ecosystem of today, we all talk of startups and there are a number of unicorns which are amongst the startups which have come up in India. Bulk of these startups have been started by people who are in the age group of less than 25 years. These startups require 
new ways of doing work and new ideas and it is the youth who are not shackled by the experiences of their past they think out of the box and that is how they are able to come up with new ideas the second example i like to give is about our current indian cricket team touring australia you are all aware that we lost the adelaide test and after that our captain virat kohli had to come back because his wife was expecting a baby the next in next good player in the team rohit sharma was also not available because of injury and the mantle fell on the young team not very experienced and lo and behold in the melbourne test he won very handsomely this just clearly shows that if the youth is energy is channelized they are given proper guidance and coaching they will be able to deliver very strongly and to the progress of this country you also saw in the last test which just concluded yesterday in spite of so much of adverse uh, circumstances in which they were working uh, they were playing they managed to pull off a good draw which the press has said was actually a victory for the indian cricket team this goes on to show that the youth of today have a lot of potential in them and it's important that we channelize their energy i'd like to conclude by few quotes from swami vivekananda whose birthday we are celebrating today as the national youth day youth is the best time the way in which you utilize this period will decide the nature of the coming years that are ahead of you that means that how you utilize your youth how you utilize the time when you are young will decide how great you will be or how good you will be in the in your later years the supreme value of youth is incalculable and indes- indescribable youth life is the most precious life this is the time to decide the future not when you grow old and you are worn out these are some of the few quotes of swami uh, vivekananda and it's very apt that in the current pandemic if you really look at it india has been in the forefront of fighting this pandemic we have come up with two vaccines which have been developed indigenously and has been developed by our own young scientists and in that context it's very very relevant that we are having today a talk by a very very eminent personality who has shaped the indian space research organization from its formative years and who has been instrumental in our mission mars our mangalyaan it's by no means a small achievement and we are very fortunate sir to have you with us to guide our students in terms of how to shape up their own future and the future of the how they will be in the position to shape the future of our country i also take this opportunity to welcome justice radha krishnan sir whose contribution to vivek has been immense he has come to our institution 
a number of times and he has addressed our students in the past and he has been our well wisher he has encouraged our students is encouraging our students and uh, in memory of uh, some of his family members there are a lot of uh, awards which are we have we will be present today academic awards for students excelling in the hsc examination and in the uh, bcom examinations of held by the university of mumbai so thank you sirs and i also take this opportunity to welcome all principals of other colleges who are present today and teachers from other colleges and other dignitaries who have come especially special thanks special uh, thanks to ap jayaraman sir and uh, uh narayan sir of idf who have been very very supportive of all the initiatives of vivek for raising this occasion and i welcome each and every one of you and i hope that as students students of this college will really benefit from today's uh, talk and uh, guidance from sri radhakrishnan sir thank you very much thank you sir for those students who don't know our president sir our president sir of vivek education society is an ex vice president of ibm and i'm sure sir with uh, with the words that you have said the youth of today and all those who are listening on youtube the our students will definitely have that seed sown into their hearts and do better for themselves and for the country for a better tomorrow may i now invite our principal madam dr vidhya shetty to kindly introduce our chief guest dr kopilil radhakrishnan sir and also our guest of honor to this august gathering thank you professor maria good morning to one and all and a humble thanks to each one of you for joining us for this flagship program which has been started at vivek it's my pleasure to introduce the chief guest and the guest of honor for today's function i begin with introducing our chief guest dr k radhakrishnan sir dr k radhakrishnan sir dr k radhakrishnan sir was the chairman of space commission secretary of the department of space and chairman of isro from 2009 to 2014 He has provided a strong and a successful leadership to 16,000 strong Team Isro for 37 space mission, including several historic feats in India's space endeavor. Most notably, he is credited for steering India's first planetary exploration mission to Mars, Mangalyaan. From the concept to the fruition, within four years, establishing India as a first country. to have successful mission to mars in its first attempt and above all at a very significantly low cost he has been an astute institutional builder with a strategic vision an able and diligent administrator a dynamic and a result oriented manager and most importantly an inspiring leader credited with nurturing leadership especially in younger generation an electrical engineer inducted in isro in 1971 at the vikram sarabhai space center dr radhakrishnan studied management at iim bangalore and obtained doctorate from iit kharagpur he held key roles in avionic system technology management space economics and space application for three decades importantly he rose to become the director of chain of regional remote sensing centers by 1989 and mission director for the national space application mission during 1997-2000 during a stint of 5 years at the indian national center for ocean information services as a founder director he became the vice chairman of indian governmental oceanographic commission of unesco and the first project director of india's tsunami early warning system back at isro in 2005 he headed the national remote sensing agency till 2007 and vikram sarabhai space center during 2007 to 2009 dr 
Dr. Radhakrishnan is a fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineering and National Academy of Science, India, and member of International Academy of Astronautics. He is bestowed with Padma Bhushan, the third highest civilian award in India, and also the very coveted Alan D. Emil Memorial Award of the International Astronautical Federation, and more, more than 50 awards and accolades. The Nature Journal chose him as one of the 10 people who mattered in the year 2014. His biography, My Odyssey, Memories of Man Behind Mangalyan Mission, co-authored with Nilanjan Rao, was published by Penguin India Random House in 2016. Presently, Dr. Radhakrishnan is an honorary distinguished advisor in the Department of Space, ISRO, Chairman of the Board of Governors of IIT Kanpur and IIT Roper, as well as Chairman of the Standing Committee of IIT Council. Also, he is a member of Advisory Council of Pranab Mukherjee Foundation and Honorary Member of UAE Space Agency's International Advisory Board. In addition to his personality, Dr. Radhakrishnan is as passionate about ragas as he is for rockets. He is a Karnatak music and a Kathakali enthusiastic performer. We are all delighted at Vivek to have a person of such a stature as we celebrate the National Youth Day commemorating the birth anniversary of Swami Vivekanan. So, on behalf of the entire institution, I welcome you once again for this memorial lecture. Our next guest is our own, I can say, Justice S. Radhakrishnan, sir, who is a guest of honor for today's function. Justice Radhakrishnan, sir, is a BSc graduate. He stood first in LLM degree of Mumbai, the then Bombay University. He was awarded degree of PhD in law by the Bombay University. He has practiced law for more than 25 years in the Bombay High Court, mainly in the civil, commercial, constitutional, and administrative law field. He is having more than 13 years of experience as a judge of Bombay High Court from 1996 to 2008, was a chairman of High Court Legal Service Committee and was heading various committees of High Court, including Finance and Budget Committee. As a judge of Bombay High Court, he handled various commercial matters, company matters, arbitration matters, including income tax, center excise, customs, service matters, etc. He also has an experience in the medical field, having handled a number of medical legal cases before the Maharashtra Medical Council, State Consumer Commission, and Bombay High Court. He was a legal advisor of Association of Medical Consultants for many years. He also has an experience in the Maharashtra Administrative Tribunal from 2009 to 2014, having streamlined the disposal of cases with minimum pendency now. Most of the cases are being disposed within a span of one year. More than this, he also has, he is also an academician. He has taught the LLB students, LLM students for more than a decade. He is also a member of the Academic Council in various universities and member of the board in various universities. He has also appeared in various PIL matters to protect the green space in Mumbai and prevent noise pollution. Sometimes he's also known as a green lawyer. He's also the chairman of expert committee, Lonavla. In June 2014, Bombay High Court appointed him as a chairman of committee to protect and improve the environment of Lonavla and Khandala where he still continues to be the chairman of the expert committee. He is also the chairman of prison reforms committee. In addition to all, I can say that Justice Radhakrishnan has been a great well-wisher for all of us at Vivek. But one quality which makes him very distinctive is his humility. He is, we all look forward to hear from all our guests. Once again, I invite chief guest and our guest of honor for this lecture. Thank you. Over to you, Professor Maria. Thank you so much, Madam, for that wonderful introduction. 
and i'm sure our students deserve this introduction and a day is not enough to know both the eminent personalities who are with us and uh, as you rightly said uh, humility is what uh, our guest of honor uh, honorable justice dr s radhakrishnan sir is all about a sense of humility is vital to great leadership because it authenticates a person's humbleness and his leadership is an opportunity to serve that's what sir is doing it may i humbly invite our guest of honor for today's second annual memorial lecture honorable justice dr s radhakrishnan sir to give his address over to you sir thank you uh, dr k radhakrishnan chair former chairman of uh, indian space research organization mr sri ram Uh, the president of vivek education society and all other um, members of the governing body uh, doc principal dr vijayta shetty and all other principals students and dear students it's a, i feel very honored to address you all before a great luminary who is going to speak after me and uh, see today is a very important and auspicious day Uh, in the sense it is the birthday of swami vivekananda he represents the youth power and uh, he actually advocated that youth should be the main uh, force behind every country and he was also able to bring about enlightenment and he addressed the all the uh, in all the countries and and today's topic is very very vital in the sense mission india the role of students role of youth for future india now why i'm saying it's very important is uh, you you might be surprised to know india is the youngest country today in the world our age today average age in india is 29 years no other country is anywhere near us in the sense now our the elderly population is much lesser than the younger population that's why it is called the youngest country so now the entire future lies with you and probably by the year 2030 india will become the third largest economy in the world and so that's why the importance is of our youth so one small thing i want to state that You see in india we have a, some complex about everybody after passing school should go to a college you know you'll find bombay everywhere you know after 12th standard is a mad rush to join colleges see in advanced countries like uk and various other countries only 5% of students who pass out of school go to the colleges now in india what happens is everyone after school college either ba bsc bcom b etc etc but what we need is skill what is important is we need skilled persons to help our economy in fact in that context in 2030 out of the entire lot of students will pass out to 12th standard only 47% will be skilled the other 53 will have no skill at all so the so therefore what i am trying to emphasize is now you all should start not aspiring only after school we must go to the college we must go to the college we must try to learn skills fortunately in india today i mean bomb maharashtra today we have a department called maharashtra skill development agency which trains anyone who wants to learn the skill maybe for 6 months or a year and after they are fully trained they give a certificate a government certificate is issued with that you will be able to secure a job today in fact most of the skill people earn more than the other persons who have just joined the college and they join as a clerk or they join as a typist or stenographer is much better is to learn a good skill so this is one of my suggestion because you are all going to be the future leaders of our country so it is not necessary that everyone should get a uh, degree and etc etc fortunately we have a i must uh, profusely thank uh, dr radhak k radhakrishnan chairman uh, former chairman of uh, indian space research organization for accepting our invitation because very rarely we'll come across a person of such stature he has got 41 years of experience 
in outer space as well as deep ocean. This kind of combination is very, very rare. And he has launched several space vehicles. And the most important was the mission Mars. I mean, most of you are aware, based on uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan's mission, a film has been produced. It's called Mission Mangal. Very beautiful and very inspiring film. I think most of you must have watched also. The whole idea is we should be like Mission Mangal and tomorrow Mission Future India should be with the youth and you'll all be able to successfully achieve that. Wishing you all the best. Now, I do not want to stand any more between you and Dr. Radhakrishnan. Please, thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful thought. Mission Youth, today's youth. And let us not waste time. Uh, I just remember Robert Frost quote, two roads diverged in a wood and a Chief guest, Dr. Kopil Radhakrishnan, sir, took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. May I now invite our chief guest and keynote speaker, Dr. Kopil Radhakrishnan, sir, former chairman of Indian Space Research Organization, to speak on the topic Mission India, the role of youth in shaping India's future, in shaping our youth's future. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Admirable President of Vivek Education Society, Sri Sri Ram. Honorable Justice Dr. S. Radhakrishnan and his gracious family members, the erudite principal, Dr. Vijayda Shetty, eminent members of the governing body, the distinguished invitees, principals, and my dear students. It has been a great honor and privilege to be part of this program today on the National Youth Day to speak after a great son of India, former Justice Sri Krishna spoke and to share my thoughts about the subject Mission India, the role of youth in shaping India's future. Essentially, I will share the takeaway from my ODC. But before that, we talk about the future of India and the mission that is before every one of us. We all know that in the year 2020, while we went through the pandemic with grit and determination and showed to the world as Sri Sri Ram told us that we have our own way of handling difficulties. India also stepped up in the global economy by becoming the fifth largest economy of the world as indicated by the nominal GDP. Now, what is the dream before all of us? Can we go further up? Can we become a 10 trillion economy? Can we increase our position on the global competitiveness, on the inclusiveness, on the science and technology French, which will certainly propel the growth. And what will be that model India is going to show to the world on sustainable development, especially when environment and climate are the concerns of the global community. Now, these are all the things that we as Indians should be looking for for the future. 
all the speakers mentioned about this demographic dividend. It is indicated that 35% of Indians today are below the age of 19. And that is the youth which is going to really build the future of India. And rightly, we talk about this subject on the National Youth Day. Why? Can I request Mayur to go to the next slide? These are some of the Gospels of Swami Vivekananda. He was born on 12 January 1863. At the age of 18, he had the guts or the inquisitiveness to ask Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Sir, have you seen God? A person at the age of 23 laid the foundation for the Ramakrishna Brotherhood. And at the age of 30, he was on the global stage. The famous Parliament of Legions at Chicago, where he rose to speak, sisters and brothers of America, and there were 7,000 members of the audience who stood up for the next three minutes. Also, while on his travel, he met J.R.D. Tata, and the idea that he gave to Tata to distinguish between import of technology for steel manufacturing, vis-a-vis development of Indian capability through research in understanding the science of steel, which paved way for the Indian Institute of Science that we see in India, the pride of India. And look at some of the gospels from this great person. And which I normally quote in all the convocation addresses, mind you, this is life's experience. If you really want the good of others, the whole universe may stand against you and still cannot hurt you. It must crumble before the power of the Lord himself in you if you are sincere and really unselfish. Give me few men and women who are pure and selfless and I shall shake the world. When you are born as a man or woman, Leave some indelible mark behind you. He who is the servant of all is the true master. He never becomes a leader in whose love there is a consideration of high and low. He whose love knows no end and never stops to consider high or low has the whole world lying at his feet. And finally, they alone live who live for others. So these are great messages from which we all should take inspiration. And that too, who came from someone who is below the age of 30. Can I have the next slide, please? In India, we have the adage. Mata, Pita, Guru, Deva. A child goes through the formative years through the hands of, through the learnings from the mother, father, and gurus. I was fortunate to be son of parents whom I have just put here, who believed in a value system and who imparted that value system to all of us and to many students. Professor Yamasen Poeti, he was my professor in the engineering college, Trichur, and for three years he taught me. And what he showed to all of us, without speaking much, was how to be a learner. He was always there to learn the advanced topic 
was always there to share that with the students. And in the year 1971, I had to take the cardinal decision of my career. And it was he who gave me that advice, you choose to go to ISRO rather than looking for an interview and opportunity in another multinational company. Probably he knew me and probably he knew what is in store as a visionary for the Indian space program of the future decades. Dr. S.C. Gupta, who was the director of Ikram Saravai Space Center in the 90s, was my immediate boss for almost 10 years, the first decade of my career. He is a stalwart in space technology. And we all today talk about the PSLV, which made only successes. And he was the person who faced the first failure of PSLV and brought it back. But he left the successes to his successors, a karma yogi. And they gave me the inspiration in my formative years. And if I became what I am today, these four persons have contributed a lot to me in that. Next slide, please. Life began after that at Bangalore. And I had the opportunity to work with two legends, Professor Satish Dhawan and later Professor U. R. Rao. After Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the father of Indian space program, everyone knows it was Professor Dhawan who took the mantle and made ISRO and the Indian space program what it is today. And Professor U. R. Rao is the father of satellite technology in India who continued to contribute to the program till the end of their active life. I had the ability or the opportunity to observe them and study at very close quarters. Things which you don't get from the textbooks. Essentially in this process, what I gained was to raise my conceptual skills. It is essential to count the trees, essential to get into the detail, but at the same time, we should be able to see the larger picture. And only if we can see the larger picture, we can create a larger future. The world is changing, technology is changing, science is changing, and one has to widen the horizon. Just because I studied a subject in my college, I continued to be an expert in that area, and that's the end of it, is not the attitude we must be able to study new things as they come, see what impact it can make, what opportunity that provides. Sense for opportunities. In every situation, there is a sense of opportunity. And if we can get that, even in the post-COVID situation, we have seen how the opportunities have been harnessed in several areas. And finally, we come across a lot of personalities. And we talk about this word role model. There is no one role model that one should adopt. Adopt, adapt, and avoid from whatever you see from anyone around you. We can learn from everyone. Elderly people, younger people, people who are in big positions, and people who are doing probably a skilled job. So adopt, adapt, and avoid also what one should not take. Next slide, my The next phase came where I was in the driver's seat, and especially the year 2009 when I became the chairman of ISRO. And in the next year, 2010, I had to shoulder two consecutive failures of the GSLV launcher. 
embrace adversities. And if you embrace adversities, if you come across obstacles in front of you, then there are two options. One can get into depression or one can rise. One can develop oneself and overcome that. In the process, your inner strength goes up. This is true for an individual. This is true for an organization. This is true for a nation, which we are seeing today. And when we do this, there will be a lot of criticism. Don't get swayed away by the criticism, but in every criticism, every sentence that they utter, there is a signal. If we can catch that signal and then improve yourself, you will become a better personality. And when we deal with nation building, when we work with the money provided by the taxpayer, when they are all your stakeholders, it is essential to be transparent, to be objective and earn their trust. And finally, it is the team that makes the difference. It is not single individuals saying that I did it. This I has no meaning here. It is the team that makes. If you look at the old movie, Chakti, how the synergy becomes important. And most important part of it, when there is adversity, it is the responsibility of the leader to come to the French and accept that responsibility, shoulder that responsibility, and then inspire the team to excel. And what you see here is that difficult period that ISRO went through in the year 2010 with two consecutive GSLE flights and a controversy. And here you see the prime minister of those days and the current prime minister who was the chief minister then of Gujarat coming to ISRO to enhance the morale of the ISRO community. Next one. And this is where you share the successes, the fruits of success. The GSLV with the Indian cryogenic engine and stage that failed in 2010 April, the GSLV with the Russian cryogenic stage that failed in 2010 December, went through a great series of reviews and corrections. And in 2014, we had that victory, a major landmark in technology, January 5, 2014. And here you see the team, the leaders who held everybody together and brought it. And GSLV has been, Indian cryogenic engine has been working successfully since then. And on the other side, you see the picture from the Mission Control Center of Mars Orbiter Mission on September 24, 2014. And what is more important is this enthusiastic youth who made the difference for this mission. Doing that mission in four years was a challenge. When US on their 22nd Mars mission took 11 years from concept to fruition. Of course, it was a mission with larger scientific objective. The Indian mission's objective was to reach there technological achievement was the most important element. And it is these people who did that working day and night. And finally, if you are an individual, if you are an organization, you should be able to make a difference. Then only your existence will be justified. Now, this is as far as doing things are concerned. And another responsibility for every individual at any level is to grow the succession line. And if you see the picture of 2014 where the GSLE mission became successful and you look at the faces closely, my successors are all there and succession line was 
clear for everyone. And finally, if you live in this world, you have to live with a legacy. And finally, it is a job of everyone to share what we know to the younger generation, care for the youngsters, inspire the youngsters. Currently, I am in that stage of being a mentor through different roles that I do. Next. I should share something about the domain in which I have been working since 1971. And in 1957, in the world, first time an artificial satellite was put around Earth and people said that's the beginning of modern space age. Mostly America, Soviet Union and other countries were there and India joined in 1962. From modern space age, now we have come to the new space age. New space age where individual protagonists of space have come forward to do cutting edge technology and science like Elon Musk, like Jeff Bezos. What are the opportunities, what are the prospects and what are the challenges in front of the youth? Of course, when we talk about space, there are five major elements, space exploration, exploitation of celestial resources, the enterprise that one can build for the satellites and launch vehicles and applications, the engagement, how the space systems can be used for several activities of human welfare, etc. And finally, the cutting edge engineering technology associated with this. Now, what are the opportunities for India in this area? space science and exploration missions. We had Mars orbiter mission, continuation of our planetary and lunar exploration, looking at Aditya, looking at the universe, trying to find out whether we can look at the exploitation of celestial resources, solar power platforms, the first and foremost one, mining of resources in moon and Mars, and what is required for this purpose. Today, we talk about the Gaganyan mission, India's entry into human space flight, how we can advance in this area, and what more is required to ensure that the human beings could stay in space, could come back safely, whether they will be able to conduct experiments and what kind of experiments. Now, if you have to do all these complex jobs, you have to plan missions to navigate that spacecraft to specified orbits and surface, not only around Earth, but around Moon, around Mars, around other planets. We should be able to develop instruments, spacecraft, and powerful rockets for this purpose. And that is technological challenge. And for the youth, they have to focus on new domains or more focus on these domains, astronomy, astrophysics, cosmology, applied sciences, engineering disciplines, mathematics, astrobiology, and bioastronautics. So this is on one side. On the other side, to the students of commerce and management, there's a large opportunity of a space enterprise, which has already come up now. And in the world, if you look at the space economy, and the world space economy has come, space law has come, space commerce has come as new disciplines. And in 2019, the space economy was estimated to be 366 billion US dollars, out of which 75% was contributed by the commercial equipment and applications. Building satellites of thousands in numbers, operating the constellation of satellites for communication, broadcasting, education, data connectivity, or Earth observation missions for weather forecasting, climate studies, the navigation satellite systems, determination of position, famously known as JPS or Galileo of Russia or of Galileo of Europe, GLONASS of Russia, NAVIC of India, and all possible applications with it. And looking at the natural resources, the terrain and objects, using them for human welfare, using them for addressing the sustainable development goals, using them for strategic applications of surveillance and supremacy. 
building, launching, operating, and using the satellite system is a big enterprise today. Of which you require the specialized agencies, the users of different areas, the industry, and the startups. And the structural reforms of 2020 in the space sector provides that empowerment for the new startups in private sector to come and become major players in the arena of space. So this is one area which would certainly contribute to the future India. And let me conclude by the next slide. Next one, please. In a nutshell, the takeaway for the day from me is these three aspects. Knowing is important. Doing is important and being is important. One has to continue to be a learner. And what we learn in the college, when we come out of a college with a degree, is how to learn. And every day, make it a point to learn something new. In olden days, it took at least five years for one to become obsolete. But today, you become obsolete if you don't catch up on a monthly basis on what is happening today in terms of science, technology, etc., etc. Knowing is important, but how do you translate that knowledge into something very specific, something which is very useful? How do we create that ability to organize and realize them with the resources, with the people? And these are the important skills. And finally, what you are matters, your character, your conscience, the value systems, the integrity, honesty, courage, conviction, these all make you different from others to become a global citizen. So friends, next one. I conclude with this statement, that live with selfless service and leave a legacy behind. My best wishes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for that wonderful formative years of yours, where we, all those who are listening to you in this online platform, know for sure that everyone is a learner on this earth. And we need to be the change if you wish to see in the world. That's the great quote by Mahatma Gandhi ji. So we have a few questions from the students. Shall we go ahead with the question section, yeah, sir? I request Professor Murgesh Chandran to put forward the questions. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. First of all, uh, thank you so much for this wonderful lecture. So there are a few questions from the students. Um, sir, in this age of social media distraction, how do we remain focused on our goals? It is a distraction at the same time. It also helps you to learn. Things are at your fingertips. The question of discretion. Make use of it, but don't become a slave of social media. Looking at all kinds of frivolous things that come on it. All sorts of unauthenticated information that come on it. In olden days, we used to go for encyclopedia, but today we have the Wikipedia, which also tells what is the authenticity of the content. It's a great boon for us. We look at several platforms, we learn. I also make use of that. But it's a question of discretion. What do you want to do? In every generation, there were such distractions. People have come out of it. Today it is social media, tomorrow it may be something different. So have a focus on what you want. You drive the environment rather than the environment driving you. Okay, thank you so much, sir. So the next question is, how can IT students be a part of such organization like ISRO? 
how how can it students bsc it students can be a part of such organization like isro the it is ubiquitous and in the space too there is a great amount of information technology computer processing that goes in the launch vehicle which has to find out its own position and translate that into through the algorithms to find out where finally it's at it has to terminate its flight with an on board computer a flight computer like what you see in an aircraft and it is done by the flight software if you look at the satellite which is kept in a position a satellite which manages its operations the smartness which it gives these are all part of that activity and when you say we have navigated our satellite from earth to mars it is finally these are the people who create that difference and finally on the ground the processing of the data that you get 30 40 years of satellite data is available about the earth how do you translate that into actionable intelligent products it's so from the beginning computer and computer science and applications have been part and parcel of the space program they have a very major role to play okay sir so another question is how to bring a balance between morality and material comforts yes question itself gives the answers one has to determine you require material also to survive the question is where you were need stops what is your fine line of that boundary that one has to determine but finally one will come to the conclusion that it is that last thing which i told that makes the whole difference how you can be good how you can do good to others and on what you will be remembered in the future you require a bed to sleep okay, but by amassing wealth you cannot get a good sleep on that bed okay thank you sir so one last question how to live a disciplined life what do you mean by disciplined life so this is a question which has come from the student uh, like uh, in this age it's very difficult to maintain a proper disciplined uh, way you have to channelize so, your you have to channelize um, your energy to learn new things and do good things there is always positivity and negativity which you will see around you and you should have that perception to absorb the positivities and then go by it you should not be a prisoner of discipline discipline is not for discipline actually there is an end goal and a good means to reach that level probably you should be looking at justice dr radha krishnan to supplement Uh, thank you very much, sir. So that's all from my side. Okay. Over to you, Maria, ma'am. Thank you, Professor Murgesh, and thank you so much, sir, for answering all the queries from the youth side. We move on to the most awaited excellence awards of nineteen twenty. Excellence, which is defined. as quality of excelling greatness value worth and when we excel to what we do we shine we stand out and this presentation of excellence award goes from comes from the memorial lecture i take this privilege to announce the prize winners of 
the presentation of excellence awards 2019-20 shrimati sita sundaram award has been conferred to mr vijay vivek prajapati for securing highest percentage in the hsc examination under science stream for the academic year 1920 Shrimati Sita Sundaram Award has been conferred to Ms. Shravya Shetty for securing highest percentage in the HSC examination under Commerce Stream for the academic year 1920. Shrimati Sita Sundaram Award has been conferred to Ms. Mehak Khan for securing highest percentage in the HSC examination under Arts Stream for the academic year 1920. Shri P V Subramaniam Award has been conferred to Ms Payal Rane for securing highest score among all self financing undergraduate and postgraduate program examination for the academic year 1920. We also have Shri P V Subramaniam Award been conferred to Ms Sonal Mishra for securing highest score in the bachelor of commerce examination for the academic year 1920 these this year we have these five students in the excellence awards the root of all goodness lies in the soil of appreciation and goodness may i now invite Professor Manisha Naik, Madam, to propose the vote of thanks. Good afternoon, all. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. Let me first begin by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's event a resounding success. on behalf of vivek education society's vivek college of commerce i take this opportunity to propose a humble vote of thanks to all those who have directly and indirectly contributed to our flagship program the second annual shrimati a a saraswati memorial lecture organized by iqac of vivek college of commerce at the outset I wish to express my deep sense of gratitude to our chief guest and keynote speaker of today's function Padma Bhushan Dr Radha Krishnan sir for accepting our invitation and giving us valuable time sir my heartfelt thanks to you for giving an excellent coverage to topic mission india the role of youth in shaping india's future your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us new paths my sincere thanks to you for delivering valuable insight to the youth of today for a better tomorrow we are truly inspired by your words i am indebted and grateful to our guest of honor justice radha krishnan sir and his family members for their unfailing faith on the vivian family on the vivian family for being the pioneer in this annual memorial lecture our heartfelt gratitude to you sir gratitude being the most respectable form of courtesy we seek your blessings and graces sir we are thankful to all the respectable principals faculties and the dignified guests from india and abroad for joining and gracing our program today we are thankful to our very own management of vivek education society for their motivation and the strongest support we are thankful to idf dr naren ayer for his unending support to the vivek family my thanks are due to the entire vivek team for their enthusiastic support and participation our heartfelt thanks are due to 
the entire student community who has joined today and for making this program a great success. Thank you. Thank you once again. Over to you, Maria. Thank you, ma'am. The feedback link is provided in the YouTube platform on Zoom platform and all the WhatsApp and Telegram groups. You are requested to kindly fill the feedback form. With principal ma'am permission, shall we end the webinar ma'am? Thank you so much. Yes, Maria, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Once again, namaskaram. Vanakam, everyone. Thank you for this wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.